it's time we go over volitional. What the heck is volitional? I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you. Volitional are commands, wishes, requests. They can be in the second person, which is imperative. They can be in the first person, which is cohortative. They can be in the third person, which is jussive. That's how commands work in Hebrew. Let's get into this. Now, we mentioned before that understanding the perfect and imperfect cal was, well, imperative. There's a reason for that, and that's because the other conjugations and the other stems are built off of the cal perfect and cal imperfect. The imperative is especially true in this regard, because you take the imperfect, you drop off the prefix, and lo and behold, you have imperative. It's that simple. So for example, tick toll, second masculine singular, that's cal imperfect. You drop the prefix and you're left with toll. Now it's an imperative, kill, instead of you will kill, kill. See the difference? So by having a mastery of the cal perfect and cal imperfect is imperative for a reason, starting with, well, the imperative in Hebrew. So we have second masculine singular, Ktol, second feminine singular, Kitli, second masculine plural, Kitlu, second feminine plural, Ktolna. Now there is a slight variation at times where you'll have a comet's hay at the end. This is the second masculine singular. And when this occurs, we have a comet's hatuf replacing the vocal shava at the beginning. So instead of Ktol, we have Katla, Katla. Now, quick note on the imperative. Imperatives never receive a negative particle, meaning they're never negated. So when Hebrew wants to do a negation, that is a prohibition, a negated command, a prohibition, it will use the imperfect plus lo, or an imperfect plus all. And that's because the imperfect can function as an imperative at times. So you'll either have the positive imperative or the negated imperfect when dealing with commands and prohibitions. There's another particle to be aware of, and that's na, na. It will follow an imperative and it basically demonstrates that a request is being made and it is being polite basically saying, please, na is please. Now, you don't always have to translate na. So if the context seems to need it, go ahead and, and include please in your translation. If the context doesn't seem to need it, don't include it. Just be aware, na is not exclusive to imperative. So as you learn more stems and conjugations, well, you'll learn more about the na particle. We're introducing it here strictly in the sense of how it's used with the imperative, but more to come. Built into the imperative is the implied you. So you don't always have to say you. If I say toll, I don't have to translate it as you kill. I could just simply say kill with an exclamation mark. Kill! That's katol in the imperative. But if you feel context warrants including the pronoun, use it. It's up to you and the context. Now, previously, when we learned the perfect, we bifurcated it. We have strong, we have weak. We spent one video learning strong, one video learning weak. We did the same thing with the imperfect. One week we spent strong imperfect. Another week we spent weak imperfect. We're not doing that anymore, at least not right now. The imperative, well, it works with both strong and weak patterns. We're covering them both. You don't need to memorize these. You need to be able to recognize them. Again, prefix drops. So you're left with the suffix. 
right? Plus, you know that it can't be the, the perfect tense because the vowels won't make sense, not relative to the, uh, the perfect conjugation. So by knowing your imperfect forwards and backwards and upside down, well, you'll be able to recognize these, no problem. Let's look at a few examples. Starting with chazak. In the second masculine singular, we have chazak. Notice the presence of the shava there in the hatef vowel to kick off our first syllable. Looks a little peculiar, right? Or how about bakar? Second masculine singular. Bakar. Or how about esor? We also have amor. Or look at shlach. Or how about matzah? We also have bene. Look at sov. We also have nafol. Or look at sa. Shave, rash, kum, sim, bo, ten, kach, lech, ye, ale, nete. Now be careful with the imperative because they do look a lot alike with some other conjugations. Chafva, third feminine singular, cal perfect, from kathav, she wrote. Chafva, cal imperative, second masculine singular with the alternate ending, you write. The difference here is there's no metheg in the imperative, showing that it's a comets hatuf, which is an old class vowel. When the metheg is present, it's a comets, which is an A class vowel. That's the only difference we're dealing with here. Chathvu, cal perfect, third common plural from kathav, they wrote, chithfu. Second masculine plural, cal imperative, kathav. You all write, exclamation mark. The difference between a comets with the metheg versus hirik, bani. Cal imperative, second feminine singular from bana, build, exclamation mark. Or, in context, it might not be imperative at all. It might not even be a verb. The same word, the same letters and vowel pointings could be a noun. It could be the masculine singular noun, ben, son, with the first common singular, pronominal suffix, my son. So, needless to say, context will be key on this one. Banu. This is cal perfect third common plural from bana. They built. Banu. Second masculine plural cal imperative from bana. You all build! Exclamation mark. Alu. This is third masculine plural cal perfect from Allah. They went up. Alu. Well, this is cal imperative. Second masculine plural. From Allah, meaning go up! Exclamation mark. So if imperative is about the second person, you. Cohortative is a cohort, meaning us. So it's the first person. Typically, these will be requests and it's inclusive in nature. Let us. It includes the speaker. It includes the writer, something to that effect. Let us. If it's singular, it's let me. If it's plural, it's let us. Sometimes the cohortative can be used to express purpose, in order to, or result. So that, resulting in. If you're not gonna use the word let, Use the word may, may we, may I. And just as we saw with the imperative, the particle na can occur with the cohortative, expressing please, please, may I. The way the cohortative is constructed is simply adding the prefix comets hey to the first common singular, first common plural imperfect. But it keeps the prefix either the Aleph or the Noon. 
So looking at Katal, we have Ektala, Niktala. Now, if imperative is for you and cohortative is for us or I or me, Jussive is for them, him, her. It's the third person, whether singular or plural. Now, just as we saw with imperative and cohortative, the particle na can also occur with the jussive, also expressing please. And just as we saw with the cohortative, the jussive can be used with the helping words let or may. The thing to understand with the jussive is that it is identical to the third person imperfect, whether singular or plural, identical. So either context will be key or na will be present. And when na is present, you know it is jussive. When it comes to weak verbs, the jussive is apocopated. Apocopated? 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 I don't know how to pronounce it, to be honest. How to say apocopated? Apocopate. Apocopated. Thank you to the dictionary for your help in pronunciation. Pronunciation. Pronoun now I need help with pronouncing pronunciation. Okay, let's move on. When we have apocopation, things will get a little different. Look at bana. The imperfect is givne. However, the jussive, when it is shortened, is given. Basically, the segel hey drops out, then our noon in this case becomes a final noon so it looks a little different but it's pretty consistent look at asa the imperfect yaase becomes yaas in the jussive or allah yaale yaa or raa yere yere this only occurs in the singular with the apocopation why because the plural in the cal imperfect third person has suffixes that cannot be dropped. I will note, if you ever have a jussive, like an apocopation jussive, a shortened jussive, if it has the vav conversive, it will not be volitional. If it has the vav conversive, it will function as the imperfect vav conversive. Now we mentioned in the imperative, negation does not occur. Instead, it uses imperfect plus either lo or all. Cohortative and jussive do occur with negation and it uses the all particle. When this occurs, it's not as forceful. It's not as strong as a prohibition than that of the imperfect plus low or the imperfect plus all. It's milder in nature. Sometimes the particle na is attached to the negative particle all with a makef. Just know it's part of the request. It does not have to be translated, but you can translate it depending on the context. If it makes sense, go for it. Now, sometimes volitional verbs may be provided in a series. In other words, a, a series, several volitional verbs that might be linked with a conjunction, the vav, not to be confused with the vav conversive. Remember, when they are in series, context will determine, are these of consequence to one another or are these a mere sequence to one another? Are these because of, or are these simply in addition to? So the successive or sequence, you just translate it one after the other, no big deal. The consequence or consecutive, consequentially, these ones are a little different. This first verb will typically be some sort of do this, the second verb and beyond will typically be something like 
then this will happen all based on context. A good example here is Genesis 42, 18. Zoth, this, asu, you do, command, exclamation mark, vahiyu, and you will live. Another possible sequence you may run into is an imperative followed by a perfect with a vav conversive, which of course makes it an imperfect in translation, right? Future com incomplete action. But future incomplete action is another way of doing imperatives. So it makes sense, right? When this construction occurs, the perfect vav conversive carries the full weight and full force of the initial imperative verb. Sometimes you'll see an imperative followed by an imperfect or cohortative. Imperative plus imperfect or imperative plus cohortative creates a purpose or result clause. In this scenario, you're gonna probably have to add a few helping words in order to so that something along those lines. And that is that. Take a hand, reach over your shoulder, go up and down with the hand like this. That's right, we're gonna pat ourselves on our back. You know why? Because we have gone over Cal perfect, Cal imperfect, and Vav conversive, and now imperative, cohortative, and jussive. We are moving right along. Keep it up. You're doing great. We are almost done. We're, we're about halfway done now. So you're well on your way to getting a good grip on beginning biblical Hebrew. And before you know it, you're going to be translating the book of Ruth. That's right. To round out our series on beginning biblical Hebrew, we are going to translate the whole of Ruth. So get excited, get pumped. Let's finish out strong. We'll see you next week.